So I describe myself as a 24-year-old professional patient, Lyme disease warrior, and all-around boss lady. I grew up here in this great state of Rhode Island on a small island called Jamestown. Jamestown is between North Kingstown and Newport, which many of you may know. This was such a small island community that we did not even have a traffic light in our town, and we had to go over a bridge every day just to get to school. While I've always called Rhode Island home, I've gone to three middle schools over four years in three different states. And part of this allowed me to learn that it's so much more about learning how to adapt, how to be okay with you by yourself, and that change is inevitable. I really grew up in two different worlds. You can see there a picture of me and my father, Dave Levy. He's one of the original East Coast surfers who braved the cold waters long before anyone else. He owned a surf shop here in Rhode Island for 25 years, and I grew up going to the beach with him on weekends and running around surf expos. And on the other hand is my mom. Her name's Terry Allen Lanza, and she worked in the high fashion world, helping to develop brands like Armani. I went back and forth between Boston during the week with my mom and being here in Rhode Island with my dad on the weekends. My dad was my first example of what it took to be an entrepreneur. But my life really turned upside down when I got into the seventh grade. At that time, my mom had moved us to New Jersey because my stepdad had gotten a great job there. But halfway through seventh grade, I actually wasn't able to finish school. I became so sick, I lost 20 pounds within a month. I was in and out of the hospital, and no one really knew why. At that time, we decided to move back to Rhode Island so we could be closer to family, and my mom could have more help taking care of me. As I entered North Kingstown High School here in Rhode Island, I did a little bit better. I was able to join sports teams and be an honor roll student and really active in my community. But all the while, I kept being sick. From doctor to doctor to doctor, no one could figure out what was wrong with me. They told me that the reason that I had anxiety and depression was because I was a moody teenage girl and I needed antidepressants which I probably was a moody teenage girl. But besides the fact, I had chronic pain, and I was told that that was because I played three sports and I was overdoing it in the gym. I was told that I had chronic fatigue because school started early and maybe I just needed to get to bed earlier. But by the time I got to college, I had an experience where I couldn't even remember how to get home from the local grocery store. I had no idea where I was. And from that moment on, we knew it was something greater. After years of searching, we finally got me diagnosed with chronic neurological Lyme disease, which is all too common here on the East Coast. There were signs and warnings in my town, yet because my symptoms were so severe, no one ever figured out that that's what it was. After my freshman year of college, that's when we figured out that I would need a long-term IV known as a PICC line for long-term antibiotic treatment. Many people going through chemotherapy will use PICC lines, and it goes from a vein in the arm directly to the heart. And it's really important that you protect this medical device, because not only is it an expensive surgery, but if this gets infected, it could lead to sepsis and other life-threatening diseases. Here I was, going from this strong and confident woman who had entered my freshman year with a scholarship to my dream school, to someone who was in and out of the hospital, could no longer recognize myself, and I felt like a patient. I reclused, and I really wasn't around anyone else except my best friends at the time. And that was really challenging for me. The worst part about having a pick line is I was told to wear a cut sock on my arm to protect my medical device. I'm gonna show you what that looked like. Let's just imagine all of you taking this sock off of your foot, cutting the toes off, and putting this over a very expensive medical device. How do I look? I said, you've got to be kidding me. 
I have to go to sorority, sorority events. I want to go on dates. I want to be a normal college student. I now became that girl walking around campus with a cut sock on her arm. Do you think she got invited to any parties? No. <laughs> so through a class project, I decided that I was going to do something about this. Together with my two best friends, Maria and Yusuf, we decided that we never wanted anyone else to look and feel the way that I felt, that we were going to set off on a mission to turn sickness into strength. And that's exactly what we started to do together. In our dorm rooms, in class projects, anywhere we could, we'd often skip class just to work on our business. Our school saw that we were so serious about this, they gave us our own office space in the basement of a dorm room. We decided to start with a prototype. Through one of our design classes, we said, why can't we take the sportswear innovations that I had learned about growing up in the surfing industry? All these fabric innovations were coming out for athletes. Antimicrobials, moisture wicking. I'm sure a lot of you have bought you know, your favorite thing from Under Armour just to wear every day just because. We said, why can't we take these fabric innovations and apply them to the medical industry? And the first problem that we were going to tackle was one that I faced every single day. At this point, I've had three pick lines over the course of five years. Thankfully, I'm pick free right now, but tomorrow I'm getting a port placed because I've lost all access in my arms. What we decided to do and what was most important to us was allow people to access their medical devices without anyone having to know what was going on underneath. Because just like me, there were six million other people who got pick lines placed every year often for life-threatening diseases such as cancer and undergoing chemotherapy that not only needed to protect this device, but they wanted to feel like people again, too. So we decided that no one should ever have to have another cut-off sock ever again. So, so many times as we got started um, through this class project, Maria, my best friends, um, we entered as many pitch competitions as we got access to. Maria and I would often show up and be the only young women there pitching our businesses. And many times, the other men who were our competitors would say, oh, nice project. And I thought, thanks. My business is going great. <laughs> This was a hard pill for Maria and I to swallow, but we kept at it. We kept refining our business, working late nights in our dorm room, and we kept applying to pitch competition after pitch competition after pitch competition. Eventually, we won enough to give us some seed funding and to give us the confidence to pursue our business full time. Initially, we called our business Pick Perfect because that was the name of the product. And so many times, even when we were told no, we kept going. It was so important for us to ask the right questions. We knew what I was going through as a patient, but we wanted to confirm that the other people felt the same things that we did. We met people online and took them out to coffee. I went as far as when I was visiting California on vacation. I drove two hours to meet this lady that I met on a Facebook group just to have her try on one of our prototypes. Marie and I started showing up to nursing conferences, and people would always assume we were nurses, and we were stunned when they found out that we were just two college students with a crazy idea. And we started by turning online and telling my story. And what we really realized was that I was not alone you know, in these setbacks, in feeling like a patient, in a name on a chart. There were other people who felt like they were all alone too, and that no one was listening to them. What we learned was that there were people out there who just wanted to be heard. There were people out there who were living these lives in silence, often with medical conditions that no one else understood. They felt like they were living their lives under a rock. But all the while, they faced these challenges of not having self-confidence, losing their dignity, and feeling like 
another name on a chart, which is exactly how I felt. And what we found out as we went and told people what we were up to is they said, well, what about me? I have a feeding tube. Well, I have a port. My cousin just had a mastectomy. Oh, I've had type 1 diabetes for years. In fact, there's 133 million Americans living with some form of a chronic condition. Yet they're often swept under the rug, ignored, and left to feel like less than. I'm so glad to find out that I wasn't the only one. So what we decided to do was take a step back and pivot. People were telling us, I love what you're doing with those pick line covers and taking that you know, innovative fabric and applying it to the medical industry. But really, there's so much more out there. Like I was saying, all these other medical devices, all these other conditions. And what we learned was it was not just the patient. It was their family, caregivers, and loved ones who were just as affected by these health setbacks. So that's when, after we graduated from undergrad and we were accepted into Mass Challenge, a prestigious startup uh, accelerator, that we rebranded from Pick Perfect, a single product, to Mighty Well. And our mission was to turn sickness into strength through apparel, gear, and digital community. This allowed us a brand platform to be inclusive, to help tap into this underrepresented market and allow people to feel like there was a company that was socially motivated and people actually felt like they were being listened to, that they could dress with confidence, they could go out there and people wouldn't have to know that maybe they're carrying an ostomy bag or that they had to check their sugar seven times a day or maybe that they had a port for chemotherapy when really they just wanted to walk around feeling and looking like themselves. So once we were able to take a step back, see the larger market opportunity, good things came. There were other people who started coming out of the woodwork, who we met online, who we met on conference, at conferences, and once we were able to dedicate ourselves full time after we graduated, these people said, how can we help you make this a new segment of the fashion market? Big brands like Tommy Hilfiger started to recognize, and other brands like Target and Zappos Adaptive. We're even able to raise money from the former chief marketing officer of Reebok, whose daughter had gone through cancer and who saw this need, and famed Silicon Valley investor Tim Draper. With that, we were off to the races. Fast forwarding to fall of 2017, 26, oh my god, it's already fall 2018. Um, our vision is to be the Under Armour of the healthcare industry. Let's think about that. This small product that was intended to solve my need as a patient living with a pick line, to being able to help this underrepresented community of 133 million Americans and their loved ones. We have a full product line launching later this year, a partnership with Zappos Adaptive and Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, and many more things in the pipeline. But what wakes me up every day is receiving stories from patients like this, many of whom I met online and who have become my friends in real life. Whether we're getting texts, DMs, or handwritten notes from people saying how small products like ours are allowing them to live their life with dignity and confidence. And it made me realize that I could be a role model for those who are not ready or able to speak up for themselves yet. But I want your biggest takeaway to be this. If a sick girl from an island in Rhode Island can change the lives of others, then so can all of you. Thank you.